ascension of Jesus. It's an important event that happened on the 40th day, on Thursday, so we celebrated on the day, uh, rejoicing in Jesus, not so much leaving us, but going to be with God and still being with us, just in a different way. The opening hymn, Crowned with, with Many Crowns, 525, we rise. Our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the Ascension of our Lord is from 2 Kings chapter 2. The sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to the one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you, but if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven, and Elisha saw it and cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen, and he saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. And he took up the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him, and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. Now, when the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho saw him opposite them, they said, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 110. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, 
To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days, and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rise from the Alleluia. St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May be seated for the hymn of the day, 493, a hymn of glory, let us sing.
to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This Ascension Day, our text for meditation is our epistle reading from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. I'm going to read verse, re-read verse 9. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. That's our text. You may be seated. Dear Christian friends, Zion Lutheran Church in Brainerd has a triptych of engravings of events in the life of Jesus above the altar, listing or depicting the three main events in Jesus' life: his birth in Bethlehem, his resurrection from the dead, and then his ascension. And we have, of course, that great uh, window which depicts Jesus ascending into heaven, lifting up his hands and blessing them, blessing his disciples with the hands that were wounded as he was put on the cross, but then raised and healed, and the sight of which brings joy to those who believe in him and receive his forgiveness. The creeds Note this as well, uh, that he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Jesus is ascending to the right hand of God, to his, um, to his throne, you might say. One of the great names of Jesus that Isaiah the prophet gives the Savior is that name, Emmanuel. God with us. We think about it especially at Christmas, of course. When Jesus spoke to the disciples in the upper room before his death, the disciples were sad. Jesus said he was going from them, but he wasn't going from them to leave them. You were not remembering today Jesus going away from us as much as a different way that Jesus remains present with us. Jesus is still God with us. Emmanuel is still Emmanuel. When Jesus was, you know, the very last words of Matthew's Gospel, right before his ascension, Jesus spoke these last words. Behold, he said, pay attention to this, I am always, I am with you always. That seems a strange thing to say, for Jesus to say right before he ascended into heaven. But he was not going away. He was staying with them. Jesus ascending went into a cloud that hid them from their sight. Hid him from their sight, didn't remove him from them. The cloud was not meant to indicate some far off distance. I mean, sometimes we think about that in our picture, at least I did. You know, Jesus going up and up and up way up in the clouds. Not quite how it was. I mean, he went up in a cloud, hid him from their sight there in a closer presence. But the, right, but the cloud was a picture, an image, a, a symbol of the presence of God. And God in his right hand, which is not off somewhere, but is everywhere with us present with us. God isn't ruling some kingdom way off in the clouds, far off. He's ruling this world. Think of the disciples at Emmaus. On the very day that Jesus rose, he was with them, though they didn't recognize him. But when Jesus broke the bread, then they recognized who he was, but at that very moment, he was hidden from their sight. They didn't see him with their physical eyes, but he was still with them. And Luke makes it clear that Jesus hadn't left them when he began the book that we call the book of Acts. In the first book, we heard that epistle, or a second reading again, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Began to do and teach. Which means that this book is not so much the Acts of the Apostles, as it's sometimes called, but the acts, continuing Acts of Jesus. This is about what Jesus continues to do and teach just in a different way. For 40 days, Jesus was appearing to the disciples, showing himself to be alive with them, although not quite the same as before, but coming to them, appearing to them, teaching them, and going away, and finally teaching them, of course, reminding them about the kingdom of God, and instructing them to stay there in Jerusalem until 
they received the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. And it would not be long. At the end of 40 days, Jesus ascended, but it was not going away, but being with them in a different way. He is at the right hand of God still and present with his church, with us who believe in him. Our faith in him, we recognize that he is with us, present with us though hidden, at God's right hand, with the authority that he had as God from the beginning, from eternity, and now taking our human nature that he received from the womb of the Virgin Mary and taking that human nature and taking that to God's right hand as well. It was kind of strange to hear the disciples say, and it was hard, I guess you didn't interpret it several ways, but when the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? Usually we think of them as being somewhat confused, which they often were, of course, um, and thinking that now you know, something important is happening, Jesus is going to be king and he's going to be establishing an earthly kingdom that we are going to be a part of here in this world. Or maybe they were thinking, you know what, is this the time that you are taking up your spiritual reign? I don't know, I kind of, I kind of take them as speaking that in a, you know, a, a myth confused sense. Either way, Jesus does answer a bit obliquely. Yes, he goes to rule, but not as an earthly kingdom. He is going to rule. His ascension is so that he can rule for us, remaining with us, not off in heaven somewhere while we continue to struggle and endure in this life while Jesus is gone, enjoying maybe his vacation somewhere off in the far off places. His true man and his true God everywhere and with us, especially where he has said he will be. In the breaking of the bread is one place, of course, in the Lord's Supper. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us in our need, giving us his gifts at all times, even when we don't recognize his presence. He comes to us in his word, his word that we as believers hear and recognize as spiritual words directed to us through the Holy Spirit and bringing us Jesus. He comes to us in our baptism when we are joined together with Christ in his death and resurrection, in the absolution of forgiveness of sins in many and diverse ways. This is what we are remembering on Ascension Day. Not Jesus going away from us, but continuing to be with us. And this is what Paul even remembers, mentions as he in Ephesians chapter 4, recalls what Jesus accomplished in his ascension. Quoting 68, which we heard this morning, therefore it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and gave gifts to men. And Paul mentions the gifts of God in people serving the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, building up the body of Christ as a church, causing us to mature and grow into the fullness of Christ, not tossed to and fro by various false teachings, but knowing and speaking the truth in love. Jesus ascended in order to give and work in the church, to continue to be with us. In the first book I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach, Jesus still begin, does and teaches and is present with the church and with this world, acting, teaching, giving us his body and blood and the break of the bread, sending his Holy Spirit to guide and direct us, to work in us as we grow, as we learn, as we speak the truth to one another in love, and as we serve one another in, in that same love. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please rise. I may the peace of God which passes all our human understanding keep your hearts and minds in our risen and ascended Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. We confess together our Christian faith, the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, since your Son has gone up with a shout and the sound of a trumpet ascended in triumph and seated at your right hand, so open our lips to sing praises to our King, rejoicing and living in the truth of his victory for us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Blessed Lord, you established your church and cleansed her with your Son's blood. Continue to cleanse and renew your people that we may remember our baptismal vocation of worship, witness, prayer, and service. Give to your church faithful men and women who will heed your call to church work vocations. Bless especially those men and women set apart for the ministry of word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, help us when we do not see everything in this world in subjection to Jesus. Give us eyes of faith to see him crowned with glory and honor at your right hand. And so believe that nothing is outside his control. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. O Lord, since your son will shatter kings when he executes judgments on the nations, keep our leaders from acting in ways that will earn them his wrath. Bless them with wisdom to govern us in accord with your righteous ways. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Father, believing in your son's name, we call on you to deliver all who suffer in our midst. Rescue them from sickness of body, mind, and every other power of the enemy. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, keep us from hardness of heart and unbelief. Help us by your Spirit to believe the witness of those who saw your Son after his resurrection, that we may joyfully recline at table with him today, to eat his body and drink his blood in a worthy manner. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, wherever stands for us as our own High Priest. To you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Can be seated for the offering. Amen.
that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection appeared openly to all his disciples, and in their sight was taken up into heaven, that he might make us partakers of his divine life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same. In faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.